Hey guys, it's Drew with Huge Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In last video, we talked about trap coins. In this video, we're going to be talking about fresh coins. What's the difference between a stale coin and a fresh coin? Why does it mean so much to you as a collector or an early dealer? We're going to talk about that in this video. Let's get it started. If you guys missed last video make sure to check it out in the description below we ended up talking about a stale coin which is a coin that's been realized its full potential at auction and it's hard for coin dealers and coin collectors to get excited about that coin and make them want to have it in their collection what a fresh coin is is a coin that hasn't been to public auction is fresh out of an old collection or you know something that hasn't been seen possibly before um, when it's being offered to you. But why do fresh coins matter to you? Fresh coins have a story just like stale coins do. They have a journey from when they were minted all the way until they were offered to you. And the way that you can understand coin collecting in depth is understanding what has happened to the coin from when it was created to when you own it. And that's where a lot of the money is made or money is lost and that's why coin collectors and coin dealers study the coin market and also study the surfaces the condition of every coin because when it comes down to it they have to decide is this a coin that's fresh or is this a coin that's stale and how will this impact the next owner so we're going to take a few minutes today show you exactly what we're talking about on the whiteboard again we're going to talk about the road of a stale coin and the road of a fresh coin and why there's an exceeding value in a fresh coin over a stale coin Let's show you guys that right now. If you guys do enjoy videos like this, make sure to leave a like. We're also going to be showing you guys all the new purchases that we got in recently at the end of this video, give you an in-depth look at them, so make sure to stick around for that. So the question we're going to be answering for you guys today is, why does fresh mean anything to you as someone that's a coin dealer or a coin collector? And it all has to do with the time spectrum of when a coin was made to the ownership of the coin, when you own the coin. So even for a novice, they know how many of the coin were made, they know where it was made, they know how many were made, and that is easy knowledge to understand and uh, you know be able to recite, right? So let's talk about a coin real quick so we can give you guys a little bit of context. So let's talk about 1916D Mercury Dime in Fine 12. So there's two different roads a coin can go down, right? The stale road or the fresh road. So, we have the fresh road and the stale road. So, this coin, it circulated for a few years, and, uh, you know, overall it was pretty nice. Uh, and then, at this point right here, it was discovered. So, someone pulled it out of circulation, and they either wanted to keep it, or it got passed around a lot. And let's talk a little bit about that. So, say... It was discovered by your great, your grandfather or great grandfather. They kept it in a jewelry box, and what do they do? They ended up passing it on to their son, and then they passed it on to you. And then what? Then you got it graded. And so a fresh coin, in most scenarios, is that the coin was well taken care of, the coin was preserved, the coin was treasured. Uh, by collectors over a certain period of time and then it was brought to you as ownership and you can see that and study that by the way the coin looks and also by asking about the story hey man I know this coin just got graded I know that you're selling it to me and I'm a dealer what's the story on this well my great-grandfather found it he pulled it out of circulation and it's been in our family lineage for a while and we really care about United States coins and currency. And so that's what a fresh coin is in most scenarios. A stale coin is it was discovered and it was possibly sold to a dealer right away, right? So it was sold to a dealer and then over a certain period of time it was graded. And then, you know, it could have been cracked out. It could have been dipped. It could have been scratched. It could have been... Uh, put back into circulation, it could have, it's been passed around so many times, or uh, there's just so many things that could happen to coins over a certain period of time. Maybe it's got some old cleaning, maybe it's got that scratch in the field or that rim ding. There's so many different things that can happen to a coin. And then once it's graded, what happens? 
Well, it goes for auction here. And then it goes to another auction house and it goes for auction there. And then it goes to another auction house and it goes for auction there, right? And then it gets passed around from dealer to collector to dealer to collector to cracked out there. There's so many things, like I said, that could happen and that's what makes a coin stale. Someone could look up that certain number and say, hey, it's been to this auction. It used to look like this. It's got this problem on it. And for us, like we were talking about in the last video, we don't get excited about that coin. We kind of like, okay, it's a 16D, someone will really want it, but does it get me excited to buy it so I can offer it to my customers so I can showcase it to you guys? Not necessarily, but with fresh coins, it does. It's the same coin, it's the same grade, but does it really get you excited? Do you really love it at the end of the day, right? And then it goes back to just ownership. Understanding and knowing what these two roads are from the way that I appeal is, or the way that the surfaces have been preserved, or where the coins are even at at auction, this really is where all the money is made for people that are experienced. So, you know, if you can tell what a coin is, if it's fresh, if it's original, if it hasn't been tampered with, if you can know the story of the coin, that all culminates together in the value that the coin has when it's brought into the marketplace, either at a show or at an auction for the first time. Um, but if you can look up a certain number and say, okay, it's been to auction here, 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 and uh, it's got these many problems, all that stuff really takes away from the value of the coin. And then when it's brought to auction, you can realize and understand why it brought possibly less than a fresher coin. So what do we need to be good at and get good at to determine these two things? So um, can you study auction results? Has the coin been to auction? Also, can you determine what the story is? Because if you can determine what a story is of a coin, apart from when it was made and how many were made of it, you can bring that coin to a dealer and say, hey, I know the story of it, and uh, you're going to love it because of that, and it hasn't been to auction, and it's original. That's so much easier to sell a coin. And so what CAC has done and why CAC is important and why people think CAC is a gimmick is because CAC looks at these two roads. Has the coin had issues? Has the coin had cleaning? Um, is it it's an original state? And what they try to do is they try to find what? The best for the grade. The best for the grade and they're looking for originality. They're looking for problem free coins. And what do they do after that? They give them a good old sticker. And so someone that's new to the hobby, they come into the hobby and they say, what coins are the best investments? Or what coins are the coins that I should have in the collection, right? They go and find a dealer that says, hey, I would recommend CAC, CAC coins. And the reason why they would recommend CAC coins is because why? It's the best coin for the grade, it's original, it's problem free, and most likely it's super fresh, right? And so that's where CAC is taking up so much of the marketplace in terms of how much money is being spent on coins and their brand is increasing in value. And so we're going to talk about real quickly why a fresh coin is important by what we ran into earlier this year. So the coin we're going to talk about today is a 1921 Mercury Dime. It's great mint state 65 full bands. And we actually went to a show in Georgia. It was a very small show. Uh, we ended up buying a bunch of coins there. And towards the end of the show, which was the last purchase, we ended up finding this coin and it ended up making our show. And what we realized about this coin when we talked to the dealer that owned it is that he was the second owner of this coin. So this coin, which is on screen now for you, he told us that uh, this coin came from an original roll of mercury dimes. So what had happened was mercury dimes were made at the mint, then they were taken to banks, and then they were put in bank rolls, and then they were either kept in the bank or they were given to the public for general use. And so what he said was, I knew the owner of the original bank roll, and there was two mercury dimes out of that whole roll that were full bands. And this is one of them, Drew. And so I was like, wow, this is awesome, right? And then I was like, hey, is he telling the truth? And so we took the coin back to our table and we could see original haze from that roll. We could see 
you know, a little bit of blue. The luster was great. The surfaces were all there. Nothing has been tampered with the coin. And that made us love the coin. I mean, we love the coin. I mean, just, just talk about the freshest coin you can find. And he ended up trading this coin, the original owner, for baseball cards. So this dealer had baseball cards and sports memorabilia. And he said, hey, can I have one of those Merc Dimes? And I'll trade it for all this stuff. And so that's where he brought it to the show and he finally sold it to us. And so is this a hard sell or an easy sell when you bring it to the collector or the dealer that you're going to sell it to next? Well, this is a, for me, this is very easy because why? I know who the original owner was. I know that it hasn't been to auction. And I also know what? I also know the surfaces of the coin. I also know what to look for, what's a problem, what's not a problem. So what makes coin dealers and coin collectors that are really sophisticated special is that they know what they're looking at. So as you're progressing as someone that's in the coin collecting space, you need to know what you're looking at. You need to know what the coin is trying to tell you and what you should do next with the coin. And so what we did next, well, let's just tell you what we paid. So I believe we paid, I think, 4500 And so what we did next with it, since we're rather experienced, we've been doing coin collecting and coin dealing for three years, um, is that we said, hey, this coin's original. It's all there. There's no problems with the coin. We should send it to CEC. So we sent it to CEC, and, of course, it's stickered. And I believe we sold the coin... If I'm not mistaken, for anywhere between 5,500 to like 5,700, it's been a while. And the coins normally in that grade sell for about 6,000. So we got super close to the comps of the coin. We ended up selling it to a dealer and we ended up making a thousand dollars on the coin. So if you're somebody that's wanting to get used to understanding what the surfaces are like on a coin, how to grade coins, there's a few outlets you can use to train your eye and understand what you're looking at. One of those is the ANA grading book. It's their standards on how they grade. Uh, the way that we actually trained ourselves was we went to shows and we even asked to look at coins that we couldn't even afford at the time. Uh, the dealers were just kind enough to show us the coin and all I did was just take a look at it for a few minutes, try to understand what I was looking at. What do the surfaces look like? What do the luster look like? What did, you know, the devices, uh, was there any issues on the coin? Was there something that NGC or PCGS let go at the time? If the coin was cacked, how did that play a role in its value? That's another thing that you also have to determine. And a big way to determine that is by looking at gray sheet. Gray sheet has cack bid. It also has... Uh, non-cack bid for every single grade. So you're able to look at the auctions that have taken place and understand is there a value in sending this coin to CAC? And if it does CAC, how much more money is it adding to a coin? So we recently talked about in this video uh, how much we made on that 21 Mercury dime. And we're gonna show you one that didn't sticker that sold for a lot less. So knowing those things, being able to look them up, understand them, uh, really will help you out if you want to become a better dealer or a better collector and that's what we've learned along the way and we're going to try to talk to you guys more about it uh, especially today when we're showing you guys some great coins. So another place that I would recommend to look at grades is PCGS Tributes. Uh, Tributes are taken by PCGS on request when someone pays five dollars a coin to get them and they end up publishing a few here and there and it breaks down most of the grades from, you know, fair two all the way up to mint state 65 or 67, whatever the top pop plate coin is. And that for us allows us to study just where the wear is on a coin. Um, is it appropriately graded for a fine 12 or a VF or an XF or an AU? All those things, like I said, are vital for you. We hope this helps out a lot. And that's just from our understanding of the coin and also understanding, uh, you know, how the backstory plays a big role. Because when I brought this coin to that dealer to sell it to him, I said, hey, bro, this coin came from an original roll. You can see it by the surfaces of the coin. I don't even have to tell you. Um, I, I know who used to own it, and I just sent it to CEC. It's fresh back from CEC. It hasn't been offered to anybody else. Do you want to buy it? Right? And so 
as you start to get used to being in the space, you'll get to understand what is a fresh coin, what is a stale coin, and why it's important for you to know the differences between the two. Because that's what's going to make you the most money, and that's where all the money is made in the coin business. What's stale, what's fresh, what's nice, what's not. And uh, we hope this helped you guys out some. And let us know down below. But let's move on to some new purchases that you'll love. All right, guys. The first coin I want to show you today is this 1917 SLQ. Great Mint State 66 full head. It's a Type 1. Super flashy. Nice original coin. Ended up buying this from a shop up north. And uh, it came with another one that was really nice as well. But super hard to pass up coins like this because the eye appeal is there. It's in that little bit of an older holder and it's nice and fresh. The second coin I want to talk to you about is this 1899S $5 gold piece. Nice original surfaces, general circulation, luster still there for sure. Ended up buying this from a friend of ours, his name's Steven. He ended up sending this one and another coin uh, back in 2005 to PCGS and we are currently the second owners since it being encapsulated and CAC loved the coin as well. The next coin is this 1795 flowing hair half dollar. Most people can't afford a flowing hair half dollar because you know some are in really good condition, some are BF, XF, and uh, you know even fines can come up to a few thousand dollars. This one is under a thousand dollars and has a nice original look to it and uh, it does still have some great detail as well. The date's present, and so is the lady on the obverse. For us, it's always a great buy to get one of those. Then we have this 1937D Texas commemorative half in an OGH holder. Nice original haze, CAC approved. Luster's pretty strong, especially for a gem. A little bit of subduedness on the reverse, but we have this one and one that's a consecutive cert that we're about to show you in a minute. Here is a pretty cool 1858 small letters flying eagle scent. It's got some purple and red on the obverse of the coin. It's super tough to find flying eagle scents that are toned. And so when we saw this coin, we knew we had to give it a shot. It's got some orangish blue on the on the reverse. So that circulation probably uh, you know got the surfaces a little bit ready for some toning and we thought it was pretty neat. Take a look at this 1885 O Morgan Dollars Great Mint State 64 DMPL. So we had a friend, Steven, he uh, ended up getting this coin out of a shop in California and then we sent it in to CAC for him and then he just said hey uh, it's ready to go if you guys want to buy it and we ended up buying it from him. The O mints are a little bit softer in terms of it's reflectivity just because the dyes weren't polished as often, but this one definitely is all there. The next coin, which is the consecutive certain number of the other Texas, is this 37. It's great mid state 65. Generally the same luster, you know, probably was sent in. And, you know, it was sent in at the same time, so it was probably pulled out of uh, you know the same collection. And so pretty cool. Then we have this. 1878 eight tail feather Morgan dollar. It's graded VF30. Kind of a lower grade. Um, a lot of the people that I've seen, they offer them in mint state. This one's pretty cool because it's original. It's mid grade. And I uh, don't see these too often, especially uh, not beat up and have a bunch of issues. The next coin is this 1883 Hawaiian quarter. It's graded AU58. It's got some of that gunmetal toning. It's probably from the ships when they were sent them over and uh, you know it's still a pretty nice coin. Luster's there for sure. Just a little bit of wear and a nice true view to go along with it. Then we have this 1860 seated half dime. It's got rainbow toning on both sides of the coin. It's kind of hard to pick up on just because of how small the coin is but the reverse is definitely my favorite. There'll definitely be more images for you guys on AcousticCollectibles.com if you want to take a look at any of these. We have close-ups and we have, uh, you know, slab photos. So we have this 1917D SLQ, Great Mint State 65 
full head. It's a type one because there are no stars underneath on the reverse. But a flashy coin, very lovely to hold in hand. And once again, tough to pass on just because of how crazy the eye appeal is. Then we have this 1904 O Morgan Dollar Gray Mint State 65. Nice gemmy luster, rather problem for free fields in terms of hits. And uh, just a lovely little shaker. Then we have this 1853 $5 gold piece. This one is from Steven. And like I said, they were sent at the same time. And this one also passed the CAC. Just nice even wear and original surfaces. Gorgeous patina, especially for this mid-grade. And that's why we picked it up. And the last coin I want to show you is this large set from 1852. Nice chocolatey surfaces. A little bit of circulation, but all there in terms of originality. And we hope you guys love it. But thank you guys for taking a look at all of our new purchases. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Uh, if you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on what we had to talk about today. Does that mean a lot to you? Uh, do you look for fresh coins when you're out on the coin hunt? Make sure to subscribe because we're coming out with videos every single week. Um, if you found this information helpful and you want more people to know about it, make sure to share it with your friends and family if you want them to know a little bit more about coins because we're coming out with a lot more informational videos and we want you guys to be a part of it. And so uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.